Okay, so we're back out here with our new toy, um, slash turd. Well, maybe mega turd, I don't know. Um, it's not as rough as I was expecting, but it's still rough. Um, so it's going to take some love, but I'm happy to do it. So I want to get in here and start um, pulling some things, adjusting some things, taking inventory of what's in the car, what's not in the car, try and get a better idea of what I got here. Um, check fluids, uh, see if I can't figure out what's making that racket, etc, etc, etc. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started and we'll be back. Okay, well it seems that we got a host of freebies with this car, which I'm never upset about. Uh, there is an excess of big titty girls. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Respect. Um, center console here, or not center, whatever, the, the shifter area. Um, looks like the only bit I'm missing is that bezel portion right there. Or maybe not. Oh, nope, right here. Yeah, see how this goes? Been a while. Oh, we got it. All right, so we got that. The shifter, center console portion there. Um, so, radio and AC, I guess, you know, which don't really care. I don't want that. Um, we have our glove box. This always made me laugh. The, the covered thing that they did here, it's like so ancient, you know. Um, we got one kick panel with the fuse lid. Um, that, the uh, steering, con steering column cover with the uh, AEM Wago. Um, we got a host of like free shit, like this whole coil of n good wire here, um, electrical tape, uh, seals, bushings, um, all kind, all manner of electrical connectors, spades, some wiring harnesses. Um, there's the uh, the dash harness or whatever for uh, the gauge cluster, um, which was probably going to be next to impossible to figure out. But we can put it back in place and have it look good because we got the trim bezel as well. And then uh, I believe this is the under dash portion on the driver's side. Yeah, because that's where the uh, hood pull is there. So we got a lot of the interior. Um, door panels, uh, seats, the dash is cracked as shit as usual. That's just that uh, 240 life there. Um, but, so legitimately, uh, the only thing that we need to flesh in is going to be finishing up the merge from the, this truck uh, body, which I think it was a uh, from a Nissan hard body. Um, let me get this out of the way so you guys can see what the fuck I'm talking about. Pointing in a chair. There we go. Um, finish Frenching this in because uh, I'm I don't know how they patched it in. I don't know what's holding it. So at some point I'm going to want to take it down to metal and see what they did. Uh, but you can see that it isn't. Uh, physically attached there right it's just floating on the sides here so we're going to want to French that in with some metal and then figure out some way of uh, finishing that side panel whether it be finding some 240 ones um, and cutting them to shape or just you know drafting our own from some cardboard and then covering them with some like thin foam and some cloth of some kind or another uh, I'm not sure what I want to do about uh, this overhang here, uh, it creates like this little pocket where maybe you could store some things or hide some things. Um, you know, maybe like a, the oil uh, sump, the, 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 god damn it. The thing that holds a couple quarts of oil for when your engine starves and it just dumps it in the engine, the, that thing um, might go up beneath there or some other similar type shit. I mean, this is where they've chosen to mount their battery box, which is not a bad idea. Uh, ain't nobody gonna be sitting back here ever uh, We got our old uh, track run uh, Seatbelt still which I'm sure don't function at all um, I'll probably end up getting rid of those and swapping over to something fixed um, Like I did with my old 240 that shall not be named uh, as you can see it's the same deal over here uh, It's just floating. It's not really Frenched in or welded in in this inner portion um, that doesn't mean it's not welded everywhere else, just not here inside. So we want to fix that, get that cleaned up, get that closed in. Which uh, doesn't look like it's going to be all that difficult. It's not a lot of compound bends and it's not a whole lot of real estate that needs to be covered. Oh yeah, we still got our nice little um, headliner there. And it looks like they did a pretty good job with it. 
um, and with the exception of that back corner over there that we need to like press in and do whatever. We got this overhanging sheet metal here um, that needs to be dealt with. Uh, I'm not sure why they would squeeze the headliner back in and not have dealt with that that lingering edge or whatever the fuck, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm not here to criticize. I'm here to finish. So I um, just really want to get a better idea of what was going on here and then see if we can't figure it out. I mean, that feels solid. I'm not sure how they did that, but I'm about to figure it out. Figure out what they did, you know, because it's really hard looking at it to understand uh, what was done here. I can see that along this this bottom here, that, that it was welded pretty well. I mean, and I mean a lot of weld, not that it was welded well, because um, they're, they're bubblegum turd welds. And I can't, I'm not above bubblegum turd welds, because I do that too, but that's just how I'm describing it. So please don't think I'm a hater. Although I can be, everybody can be, right? Uh, ooh, very firm. I was pushing on the the shut towers there, or whatever the fuck I call it now. Um, so yeah, you can see that it was welded here, and I'm I'm, gonna, I'm guessing that it was you know welded uh, on the outside. But um, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of buckling. Maybe you can't see it, but there's a lot of buckling and waviness in the roof, and there's a sizable dent over there. So this is going to take some work to smooth out and get looking good again. Um, this transition from the side to the bed is very rough. Um, the general idea and shape is there. I would have liked this section here to be thinner so that uh, this, this cab portion was moved forward, but I get why they did what they did and it's the way it is now and so that's that's the way it's gonna be, you know? And so we just gotta figure out how to flesh this out, you know, cause there's a lot, like they put, they did a good start on it, but there's, a, there's still a lot to finish. Um, I don't particularly like the the see the glass is kind of tilted um, this way right and then you have this body here the line that starts to go in this way um, I would rush refer much prefer that this be flattened out or angled in the way that the windshield is or you know the, the rear glass but we're gonna have to figure out what we want to do with that because um, that you know that obviously would involve stripping this back and then moving the metal out and then patching something in to blend that in. I can do it. Um, I'm not the most experienced body guy ever, but I can do it, uh, you know. I've done other patch jobs and again, you know, like uh, it's all about patience. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're willing to work with it, massage and whatever, it'll get there. Um, they tried to patch in the missing areas or the voids. Um, but uh, I think we can do better. So we're gonna come in here probably and hack out the flat portions that they welded in because um, the weather has gotten to them pretty good. Right here you can see the rust is pretty bad. The main body's fine, it's just this new stuff that they put in, um, uh, I guess wasn't treated or sealed properly and you know, that happens. So this isn't hard work here. Like, I mean, I can cut this out and re-bend and, and roll that in and it'd be just fine. And I don't necessarily believe that I need to cut everything out, but I do need to find the weak areas and try and cut out some of that stuff before it becomes a problem later. Um, as you can see on the inside of that quarter panel over there, the metal looks beautiful. It's, it's fine. Um, it's just some of this other stuff and some of the edges. Uh, we're going to have to work with this tail section. Uh, you can see um, where it curves up, I guess, to meet the hatch or whatever. You still have that, that rise, and we're not going to leave that. We want it flat all the way back, right? So we're going to have to fix that, cut that, and, and, and adjust that. Um, and you know, then, you know, I'd like to close this up as well, which looks fairly challenging. Um, you got this flat piece with a mild curve that goes all the way across and then you'll have um, this this curve transition to another flat section. So um, I'll have to figure out some way to emulate this bend uh, as close as possible and then we'll finish out the rest with Bondo. Um, obviously it's going to be very different because uh, this, again, this, this raised hump is getting cut, so what we end up with will be very different. And I guess that allows me to define my own edge on this back section, which is kind of a blessing. Um, but it's going to be interesting because the idea is to make an enclosure that still allows me to preserve the functionality of these rear tear lights, right? So I need this upper section that I, that I build um, to, I don't know, maybe be... 
I don't know, just self-contained, you know, not, not attaching to this in any way, but handles itself, floats itself, supports itself. Um, and then we're going to have to worry about or figure out how to, how to block this um, and make it look pretty. So, um, and still be serviceable because I need to be able to reach all of this, you know. Um, we have fairly jank wiring, it looks like, to, um, to clean up here. Uh, it's not the biggest deal in the fucking world, but I definitely want to clean this up. Um, it's, it may be serviceable, but it's not clean and it's definitely not organized and um, it, it needs to be tidied up a bit, you know, so that uh, it's supporting itself, it's safe and I don't have to chase issues um, every time I turn around. Uh, aside from that and a couple of rot holes in the floor of the trunk, um, I'm really not seeing anything that's too bad or attention grabbing even on the inside. I can tell that there's been some leaking coming in through here to the inside area. You see the, the, the surface rust from the pooling. Now none of this goes through, it's just surface rust. That's easy enough. Just whack it off, um, hit it with rust converter and call it a day. Um, I brought some rust converter with me, which I may just hit all this slightly to kind of like stop it from moving any further. But um, again, it's not the biggest concern for me at this moment. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the, um, there is some bondo here. That, that 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 cracking there, that's not the metal. That's you know. Oh, ho -ho! look at that! Like it was never there. Beautiful. I can work with that. I can work with that. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. That makes me happy. It just. I don't care about that. Fine. Fuck that. We're not looking to make a fucking garage queen here. You know, this is going to be a car that I play around in and have a good time in, but I do want it to look nice. So, so far, the general plan, though, um, everything that I've discussed um, with the body aside is going to be um, we're going with a KBD body kit, the polyurethane shit is the jam. So front, side, and video cut out on me, whatever, but we got some kind of beefy ass stainless stamped uh, control arm down there. And you know, that's just the stuff that I can see. So uh, coilovers all around. We're gonna have to figure out what we're working with here. At any rate, uh, I'm gonna get cracking and uh, we're back. So uh, I'm not sure what changed, but it's not making that racket this time at all. So maybe it was just that it's been sitting for a while and things needed to get oiled and broken loose, lifters, uh, pressurized, whatever. I don't know how this, those work in this particular motor, but she's running fine. And aside from making some kind of a high-pitched keen, um, which could be a vacuum leak or any number of bullshit, um, it's running really, really well um, for what it is. Uh, That high pitch, whatever, damn man, that's, that's awful. So obviously it's it's running kind of lean or rich or whatever. It's smoking a little bit. It's not the healthiest thing, but we we already knew that. I talked with the previous owner, and apparently there's some issue with the um, the wide band sensor. At least that's the thought process, um, which is why uh, the air fuel ratio is all over the place, which could very well lead to an engine that runs in this manner. There's some really weird shit here that uh, I'm not sure how this car comes OEM. If you look at the way that these coils are mounted, um, I don't think those are OEM coils. And they they go from this, whatever this setup they have going on here is, to a, a wire that goes down into the, uh, the spark plug area. So this is some aftermarket shit they got going on here, or some replacement crap they made work. Um, not knocking anybody, but it's definitely not the OEM crap. And I'm not a huge fan of that. It adds extra complication. And it's really difficult picking up after someone else's work and figuring out where they were and getting it right. So, uh, we got some shit to figure out here, for sure. Uh, but it's running. Um, that sound is really fucking annoying. But uh, it's just so weird, because like, uh, all I did was run it uh, for a few minutes, and then when I left, and I come back today, and um, it was very hard to start. So there is something going on there. Uh, the guy said that it sat for so long because they, you know, they couldn't get it started anymore or whatever. There is something going on with that, but it's running fine. So uh, aside from that fucking noise, so um, I need to figure that out. 
but uh, night and day difference from the first time that I started it to now. Uh, it was really giving me pause on whether this motor was going to survive another day. So uh, anyway, I kind of want to dick with it a little bit. Since I know it's not an oiling issue or something like that, I check the oil. The oil's above the full line, which is kind of how I like to roll my engines anyway. A little bit overfilled. Uh, it may not be the healthiest thing, but you're not going to run them empty. Anyway, th there's a lot of weird shit. Like this right here, I think, is their catch can setup. It's like this open tube um, coming off of the breather there. <laughs> this is some weird shit here. Anyway, um, I'll be back.